Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions, or sometimes I will do a pre recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also, of course, the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course, you just watching this video is already much appreciated, but if you wish to support the channel further, you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks, and of course, joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Leona. I'm also known as Shakur Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. If you are curious to see what that's all about, I upload a couple of vlogs a week. I'm currently ten and a half weeks out from my next competition. Uh, I will be changing categories and I will be competing in physique instead of wellness and hopefully get yeah, a pro card <laughs> um for coaching i'm pretty much at capacity to be honest i have some availability so you could inquire i do have to respond to some emails still so i'm not too sure uh but at any week you can, you can but at any time you can purchase an eight week training plan um the email is in the description so email me and i'll send you out some more information but today we're going to be looking at some glitter and lasers when everything went wrong, travel story time. I'm just curious to see what went wrong and why it went wrong and whether any of that is to do with her obesity. Got back from a As many of you know, I just got back from a trip to Spain and Portugal. And I'm sure you've seen some lovely shorts where I'm in fabulous dresses or maybe you've checked out my other channels and seen photos. And I'm going to tell you that I think a lot of the stuff that she does is just photo ops. She is not walking around too much in these places. Because I was in Portugal for my competition a few months ago. And uh, depending on what area you are, I was in Alfama, I believe, which is like the old town. There's no fucking way that she's walking around there. Because it's all... Portugal is very, First of all, Portugal is very hilly. So walking up and down, you do get in a lot of steps. And it's like small streets narrow narrow streets uh especially the old town so i think what she did is probably just took ubers and taxis and whatever else to the place that she needed to go took some pictures and then went on her merry way again because i just can't see her walking around for like hours hey violet you wanna come i just can't see her uh walking around for hours straight because that's what you do in a big city, just to get from A to B, you just walk a lot. And she's, I just don't believe she's capable of walking for like um, half an hour to an hour straight with her weight. Do we do some cat ASMR? <laughs> and it looks like I had a banging time. But in reality, on that trip, every single thing that could possibly go wrong went wrong and i felt like old me would have lost her damn mind but new me was able to be resilient and in thinking about this is this going to be another better help ad is it i'm guessing so she's going to talk about how better help has helped her not get stressed out basically i thought i would tell you the tale of everything that went wrong but then also tell you how i dealt with it so that if you're struggling with resiliency um maybe you'll learn a couple things so with that let's get into it so, I had been planning this trip to Europe for months, literally for months, and it was literally scheduled down to like two. Can you hear that? It's like crazy thunderstorms outside. Two hour in increments. And a lot of it was like coordination with partners and with like people to make some really cool things happen that wouldn't be able to happen without them. <laughs> and I'll just, I'll just fall apart. I'll just yeah. fall apart. Let's like start at the very, very beginning. So we flew to Barcelona. That's where we started the trip. And when I got... I don't want cat hairs in my coffee. She's being, she doesn't want to sit, she wants to move around a bit too much. There, I mean, we were all hungry, we didn't really eat anything on the plane. So what did we do? We ordered room service. And you would think that's fairly safe. <laughs> no. In fact, we all got food poisoning. Except me, 
having a sense of the little tummy, had like violently, explosively bad stomach issues. And it was like to the point where I couldn't eat. I mean, if you're in a big city, which I assume she, well, she flew into, did she fly into Barcelona or Madrid? Why didn't she just get Uber Eats? I, I, obviously, you can't get a hotel. Like, I assume they stayed in a nice hotel, so you would assume you wouldn't get food for poisoning. But, like, they have Uber Eats and stuff like that in European big cities. Because, you know, what comes up must come down. <laughs> I was gross. I was. Huh. Is she gonna return these clothes or something? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> I was gross. I was gross and I was really dehydrated. So I like, wasn't eating, but I was still trying to do everything, but I was sick as hell. And it got so bad that eventually when we got to Valencia, which was our second city, um, I was so dehydrated and so malnourished because I couldn't keep anything in that I literally... Malnourished? Uh, I think it takes a bit longer than to have shit for a day to actually get malnourished. Malnourished is a bit like being obese. You, I don't think you get malnourished after just a day of diarrhea and not drinking properly because of, or not pass, not keeping any liquids down. It takes a bit longer than that. But I'm sure she felt malnourished because she couldn't eat for a day. But it, yeah, I don't I don't think mal, I think malnourished is more of an actual state of being that's slightly more prolonged than a day. I could be wrong. So let's have a look. So according to the according to the World Health Organization, malnutrition is uh, refers to deficiencies, ex deficiencies, excesses, or imbalances in a person's intake of energy and or nutrients. The term malnutrition covers two broad groups of conditions. One is undernutrition, which is in, which includes stunting, low height uh, for low height for age, wasting, low weight for hay height. Underweight, low weight for age, and micronutrient deficiencies or insufficiencies, a lack of important vitamins and minerals. The, o the other is overweight, obesity, and diet-related non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, stroke, and cancer, diabetes, and cancer. So I suppose, like, may I don't know, maybe she could be malnutrition, but I don't think you get malnutrition after a day. Well, because you deplete some, like, what, pot potassium. And electrolytes, because that's basically what happens, isn't it? When you have the shits, you're not going to be like depleted of everything. It's mostly your potassium and your um, your, your your potassium and uh, what did, what did I just say? Electrolytes, yeah. Passed out in bed for an entire day, and we were panicked that I may not recover without going to the hospital. So I had a tele appointment with my doctor to try to figure out how to get better. And um, he was like, you're going to need to see a Spanish doctor, which was also a nightmare. But I ended up drinking like a whole bunch of Gatorade. <laughs> really like Gatorade saved my life. So Gatorade, sponsor me, like for real. But no, I survived on the Gatorade and I thought I was better, right? What is in Gatorade? Is it like an electrolyte drink? Gatorade, uh, both Gatorade and water will help regain the f fluid loss through exercise and physical activity. The difference is that the manufacturers add additional elements such as sugar and electrolytes. All right, so it's got electrolytes in it. Yeah, you don't have Gatorade in Europe though. So I don't know why they're carrying Gatorade around, but they I'm fairly sure they didn't buy Gatorade. Maybe they bought a similar product to Gatorade, but I, I've never seen Gatorade in Europe. I thought things were better, things were great, and I just wrote it off. I wrote, eh, bumps in the road happen, right? This is it. The big issue of the trip has happened because no matter what trip you take, guys, by the way, something always goes wrong. And so I just assumed that this had been the thing that had gone wrong and that the rest of the trip would just be the magical experience that I planned. And I'd already missed so much. Uh, I had, you know, tours and stuff that I wasn't able to go on because I was literally just doing the bare minimum and then falling apart in the hotel room at night. So finally I felt better and it was great because there was this amazing hike we're going to go on, which you can uh, check out on my adventures channel, which will be up in a little bit. Um, I hope she chose to wear appropriate footwear for this hike and not sandals because you don't go hiking in sandals especially when you're super morbidly obese and in a dress wear proper clothes please and i was so excited i got to do it and at the end of the trail there was this beautiful horse and i love animals so i had like a little moment with the horse and i was like petting him and it was it was very sweet and serene but what i did not know is that apparently my biology decided to like change it up on me and now i was suddenly severely allergic to horses and within about 15 minutes after petting this horse, my eyes turned bright red. And slowly the whole, like, face like that. I mean, these things can happen, but 
I feel like she's slightly over dramatizing it now. I know you can't develop allergies suddenly, but this really? This was swollen, and especially on one side, it was so bad I like couldn't open my eye. And where is all the footage of this though? Like this is literally you vlogging. Why aren't, why aren't you showing all of this? If it's that bad, why don't you film yourself having like a really allergic reaction? I don't know. That's literally what that that is literally her job vlogging, right? <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? I thought I was through all this stress. And that's when I started to feel like a little bit more defeated, right? One one issue I can deal with, two issues, it's like it's tough. And in this moment oh, I kind of reflected back rain. to it. Wow. That's some serious rain. Old me would do. And when I say old me I mean that's like really serious rain. Holy crap. Oh, my dog walk is going to be interesting this morning. It will be a short one, that's for sure. I mean, me before therapy, me before working on myself, and me before understanding, like, what really matters to me. Because I think when you know what matters to you, you can let anything that doesn't directly affect that, like, go. And I would say if you are in the beginning and you don't know where to start, the first place I would start is therapy. I think it's the easiest, Here we go. like, better help. way to better your life quickly. And when I say quickly, not as quickly as you think, because anyone who's gone through therapy knows it does take time, but it is in my opinion, the most direct route to self-improvement. So I know I've talked about them before, but a great option for therapy if you are just starting out is betterhelp.com. BetterHelp is actually sponsoring this video and I'm so grateful for their support, but it's great to be promoting something that I personally use myself. And I know that it can be a good solution for you. And they allow you to get matched with a therapist. And if you don't- It's been proven that it's like such a scam though. <laughs> well, like what? Look, I understand that as content creators, you have to, part of it is doing ads. Now, the reason I take on very, very rarely a sponsorship, the only sponsorship I've tried to really take on twice now and failed twice is from Harder Than Last Time, from Greg Doucette. They've reached out, to, actually Greg reached out to me personally when he started his supplement line, because uh, I did his cookbook and stuff like that. Uh, on Instagram, funnily enough, and I'm like, yeah, I'm all up for that because that's something that I would do. Like, I, I take pre-workouts, I take sports supplements like that. Didn't get the proper product, got stuck in customs. And then again, they tried, and again, it got stuck in customs. It's just like anything from the US, it's, I just don't bother ordering from the US anymore. And I've had some of you guys ask me to send me things from the US, and I just say to not bother. Or like to donate to charity instead because like literally the chances of it arriving are so small that it's just like a waste of money you know what i mean if you want to spend money on me i'd rather you just give it to charity to like an animal charity or something like that because it's like i just don't want people to spend money and spend a lot of money on like shipping etc and it to not even arrive but do i think that she uses better help maybe maybe she doesn't um but point is is that like i purposely don't take on a lot of sponsorships because of the fact that I just don't believe in a lot of product and I'm very um, it's probably not a very wise business move but I also think it's important to have certain morals and values and not just every video you make is a video to fucking promote something basically I make video I make money by you guys watching it so that's that's good enough for me um, I don't feel the need to promote things that I just know are uh, dodgy or that aren't right or that aren't going to benefit people but look if something like a, a supplement company comes out or like for example rider wear or gas for batter bodies like stuff that i wear if they were like we want to sponsor you then i'm like yeah hell yes because this is things that i actually use um do they use better help i don't know i just know that better help has got a really bad reputation and uh, it's just very interesting that a lot of these content creators, the only times they ever put out a video is to basically promote a product, which is part and parcel of it. But there's a way to do it. Like the whole video is an ad, basically. It's not kind of like, oh, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. No, no, she's made this whole video, 16 minutes of it, basically as a BetterHelp ad, as opposed to just making, I don't know, uh, it just sets a weird tone in my in 
It leaves a bit of a weird taste in my mouth, and it's not my coffee. My coffee is delicious. If you don't like them and it doesn't work out, you can easily change to someone new, which I think is honestly the hardest part of starting therapy is finding the right therapist. So being able to like change it up until you find the right person is really important. It's also convenient. You can do it whenever it works for you. I personally use the service. It worked great for me because I don't necessarily always have time in the middle of the week to go and see somebody. So I was able to do my appointments at night. You also can communicate inside the portal, which is awesome. So it's just a great solution for you if you maybe don't have the big bucks to spend on in person sessions at a traditional therapist because they're, they're really expensive. I also have a link yeah, down below. Aren't they really expensive because these people are qualified though? <sighs> you know, isn't that the whole issue with uh, better, better Help is that a lot of these people aren't actually qualified. So yeah, you spend more money, but you know, often you pay what you get for. And your mental health is <laughs> it's kind of important, isn't it? Look, I get for some people they just need to talk to somebody. You know, I had a bit of a day yesterday. And I had to voice note a couple of my friends and just have a rant. And then I had to lay in my bed and cry and I was fine afterwards. It happens. But the point is, is that if you're looking for serious treatment, mental health treatment, if there's something going on that's ongoing, that's prohibiting you from living your life properly or fully, you need to talk to an actual person that can fix it, that is qualified in this. You know, and yeah, it's expensive, but investing in your health is priceless so below in the description it's betterhelp.com slash glitter and lasers it'll get you 10 percent off your first month hey, i always fish. like to share with you guys things i've used in my own life this helped me maybe it'll help you anyway going to therapy taught me to really understand what matters to me so sitting in there where i felt really frustrated my eye was completely swollen i was tapping bennies benadryls not drugs benadryls and and you know taking washing my eyes and body copiously to try to get all of the beautiful horse hair off of my body i'm so sad i'm allergic to horses can we just talk about how crushing that was for me if you know one thing about me let it be known that i love animals and being allergic to any animals just makes me really sad so it was a finding that i was not happy with but as i was scrubbing my face i was sitting there with my eye completely swollen thinking about all the things that we had scheduled to shoot that we weren't gonna be able to shoot all the parts of this trip that were now going to be oh come on now you can still shoot the things you photoshop the shit out of your pictures anyway so like photoshopping your eyes slightly or removing some redness is not a big deal is it you photoshop everything anyway so what difference does it make not as exciting because of the fact that my face was swollen and i was now limited i remembered with like what mattered to me right and i realized the most important thing to me right now in my life and this might change is my health and uh, this is why she's losing so much weight so quickly. She is uh, like amber size, if not bigger. Do I think she's lost some weight from her biggest? Absolutely. How much are we talking? 30 pounds, maybe 40, if even that. If even that. Because 40 pounds of fat is a lot. Like, and she's still as wide as her fridge, basically. So her f let's, let's have a look at some older content that she does these standing up videos so you know what i was shopping it's very it's very useful the 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 the, the argument is that she's apparently on ozempic right that's what that's what they're saying that's that's the that's the conspiracies so i mean to be fair if you look at these side by sides there is a difference like she here she is literally the size of both fridge doors here she's only like one and a half so she has definitely lost weight i'm gonna stick with around 40 pounds you can see in her face as well she's slimmer too um could maybe be the outfit slightly but no she's she has lost weight i'm gonna give credit where credit is due i'm gonna say she's lost around 40 pounds but from what i understand it's uh, she's on on the ozempic she's not on uh it's not necessarily through diet because let's face it she never shows her diet and it's definitely not the exercise because there's no way she exercises intensely or correct or hard enough for that and you can't out train a bad diet has she lost weight yes when was this 10 months ago so since 10 months ago she's lost weight so probably is a big but um yeah i'm gonna say around 40 pounds 40 pounds yeah that's my guess 20 kilos looks about right and that's a lot by the way 20 kilos and even though there's lots of amazing things I was going to miss out on, missing out on them would mean that I could be healthy. And this is going to become a theme because this is not the last thing that went wrong on this trip. Oh my gosh. So it honestly doesn't sound so bad, but it just gets worse. So the swelling did not go down completely. 
it still was pretty swollen in my face. We just put on sunglasses and a shit ton of makeup, to be entirely honest, I'd still film. And honestly, bravo to me for pulling off stuff. But I did take it slow. I didn't like push myself. Now, I mean, I, I've never really had an allergic reaction, so I don't know. But surely you just take some antihistamines and you just get on with it, right? It's not like that bad that it completely incapacitates you, does it? Maybe it does. I don't know. Like, like I said, I don't. I'm not. I don't have allergies. Um, but I feel like she's making it sound like a lot worse than what it is. It sounds like she just had a bit of an itchy eye and needed some antihistamines, and she probably would have been fine. Because a, a severe allergic relaxion, a relaxion, reaction means that you need to have a, you need to take an EpiPen, right? That's like an actual serious reaction. This is just a discomfort. So, you know, the second you're away from the horse, you wash your face, you take some antihistamines. It's better, isn't it? Like, that stuff doesn't last for days on end. Now, I took it a little too slow because we went to Algarve and, um, well, I decided to fall asleep in the sun and got really sunburned. So now I was covered in this, like, super bad sunburn. My eyes a little swollen. I'm just getting over food poisoning, so my stomach's not 100%. And we go to this really nice dinner. And I'm talking about the most expensive dinner I've ever been to in my life at a Michelin star restaurant that I had to get reservations for, like, four months in advance. So I was, like, super hyped on this dinner. And we get there and I go to sit down. And the chairs are tiny and they have... I mean, it's it's a Michelin star restaurant. What the fuck do you expect? Uh, Michelin star restaurants are not built around death fats. Like, they're built around, like, normally speaking, people that have money like that, they tend to take care of their health as well and their physical appearance. That's kind of normally what goes hand in hand. Um, people, usually speaking, that are, like, Michelin star <laughs> rich... They tend to not be Anna's size. I'm not saying there isn't any. Of course, there's some big, rich people. But in general, what really wealthy people take care of their health. Because in order to sustain your wealth, um, you need to work. You need to be on the ball. You need to be cognitively. You need to have energy. There's a lot of things that come with it to be a certain level. To be a certain level. It's like either it's because of the way you look or it's because of the fact that you run successful businesses. And usually with that means that a lot of people that are like CEOs, they have like really strict exercise routines and they're very regimented, Norm normally speaking anyway. Have arms. And I was like, no problem. It's okay. I'll just ask for another chair. So I'm like, excuse me, man. I'm like, this chair is not going to work for me. And honestly, with what I was paying for this dinner, I deserved a chair that fit. Like this. No. <laughs> this, like, this restaurant is a culinary experience. It's not a fit in the chair experience. This this chef, you are you are eating art. You are um, this this chef has worked years and years and years. Actually worked very hard to ascertain whatever Michelin stars they have, whether that's one or many. Regardless, this person has crafted literally art on the plate. It's not about whether you and your big ass fit in a chair. It's about you being able to, ex like, you experiencing the art that has been created. Um, they don't take into consideration whether or not people can fit in chairs. Because ugh, I would imagine the entire restaurant has been so carefully designed and so carefully curated that taking into consideration chairs that can fit like 500 pound people is probably not part of it because it's just not part of the aesthetic of the restaurant i feel like if you are that concerned about not fitting in a chair then you should have maybe done your research in advance to see if they even have chairs that fit you because this is like a very unique experience so obviously everything is going to be unique including the chairs they did these would have literally been carefully picked so yeah, next time, if you're a really big person and you're going to go to like a super fine dining establishment, regardless of how much money you spent for the food, maybe give them a call and be like, look, I'm a really big person. Do you fit people like me? And they'll probably go like, sorry, this is not, unfortunately, we can't accommodate you because of the way the design of the restaurant has been done. This was not like, you know, fancy mcdonald's this was like a nice ass meal so i deserved a nice chair no you didn't no you absolutely didn't you don't deserve anything nobody deserves nothing just because you spend a lot of money doesn't mean that you deserve anything these people these people this chef 
deserves to set the standard that he wants to set for his restaurant or her restaurant because they actually crafted and worked tirelessly hours nights they worked hard to earn that star uh so they they deserve to set the standard for their restaurant and if they don't want to have chairs that fit 500 pound people then it's well within their right to not do that because they actually worked to achieve something for you to just be 500 pounds is not hard anybody can become 500 pounds to get a michelin star that's that's an accomplishment a real accomplishment and so she's like, hold on, hold on, we'll get you another chair. Proceeds to bring me a slightly bigger chair, still with arms. And I'm like, ma'am, she's like, would this work for you? And I'm like, ma'am, we said the problem was arms on the side. This does not solve the problem. And she's like, oh, well, this is the only chair we have. And I would literally look at her, I'm like, are you telling me you don't have one chair in this super expensive, fancy restaurant? Yeah, bro, you're in fucking Europe. Women like you don't walk around like this. Like I've never, like you don't see people like her here. I mean, I'm not saying they don't exist. Of course, you get like really big people in Europe, like a bit more so in England and stuff like that. But for the most part, like I don't see women her size in fucking over here, over here in Bulgaria. Like just like this kind of fat you just don't see in Europe. And like, why would they accommodate for that in a in a Michelin star restaurant? Like, like most death, <laughs> most people that are her size don't go to Michelin star restaurants for food. Like, let's let's, let's be real. Because the portions are small, like like let's be real, the portions are small, like and she eats a lot to be big. You don't you don't just get to a certain size because you're sitting there eating fine dining meals. I'm not saying that they, that they can't enjoy a fine dining meal, but the majority of the food is not fine dining, is it? Or in the like around it, that doesn't have arms. I'm just like yes, I'm sorry. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, my I don't know if you guys have ever done this. If you're a thick girl, you know this. Where like half your butt is on the back of the chair, and then you're just like free floating forward, so it looks like you're sitting, but really you're balancing. And did I want to balance for a nine course meal that was likely to take three to four hours? Hell no. But did I want to be at this dinner? Well, also kind of no, because again, I'm sunburned, I have a stomach issue, and my eye is swollen. But damn it, I hadn't been able to do so many things that day that I was gonna do this. <laughs> so help me, Bob. I was gonna do it. Well, of course, it's food, isn't it? So eventually, about 10 minutes later, they bring another chair out that is incredibly uncomfortable, but at least it doesn't have arms. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to sit here and have this dip. So they accommodated her by providing her three different chairs and she's still fucking unhappy. Can you imagine? They were literally went out of her way to give her, to give her two additional different chairs. So she had three chairs to choose from and she's still not happy. I'm going to do it. And as I'm eating this dinner, like as the meal goes on, I feel progressively worse. So that by the end of the meal, I feel terrible. Like there's no other word for it. I feel awful. And I ignore it, right? I ignore it because I'm like, everything's gone wrong. I'm going to eat my fancy meal because that's what I want to do. And I lost like sight of like what I needed to focus on. Because looking back, I should have just gone back to the hotel because your girl was going to throw up later. That's, that's the plot twist. Actually, not a plot twist. But I ended up being sick again. And it wasn't from the food, guys. The food was amazing. Everybody else enjoyed it, had a great time. It's just my body was like under siege. And I will say this, working on my health has been great, but i have it's also led to me like pushing out of my comfort zone a lot, which means I bump up against some things that are inaccessible to me still until I figure a couple other things out about how my body works. Uh, it's nothing to figure out about how your body works. You're just really fat. And basically because of that, you can't do a lot of things. You can't just go gallivanting around European cities because European cities aren't built. Uh, these, these cities are like centuries old. Some of them like millennia if you go to Rome and stuff. So what that means is, is that there is no normal infrastructure like in America where everything's just, you know, in squares, <laughs> basically. It's all up and down. It's all small. It's all tiny. It's all difficult to navigate. Um, so, yeah, you need to have a certain physical... Uh, prowess, so to speak, dexterity, agility, to some degree, to move around. And I know that she likes to pretend that she is like a hiking queen and does all these photo ops, but the reality is, it's impossible. She'll do like maybe a dancing short, but we'll like the real. I know for a fact that once she's done the short, after that she's dying. She can't do keep up this sort of exercise for a long period of time. Hey, Roser. Good morning, baby. And that's what had happened on this trip, is I never let myself get better, so I just got worse. Speaking of getting worse, the tale of the worst trip over and ever, not over, because 
once we got to Lisbon, which was our next city, I got super sick. It started with sinus issues and not being able to sleep and developed into a full blown chest infection. So I actually spent most of Lisbon. I did, you know, during the day and then at night I just slept. I didn't even eat at restaurants. <laughs> I, I don't know much about the food of uh, Portugal. Actually I do because my grandpa lived there, but I, on this trip I did not enjoy it. Uh, I did eat the hotels grotesque. What? Why are you peeping like that for? Huh? What is it? But why are you acting like a little sad girl for? Hmm? Pretty princess. I can't have you for a color, baby. It's a bit hot here. Sorry, chicken three times and it was delicious. No regrets. But <laughs> that's what I did. And eventually it started to kick into me that I was pushing too hard. And I wish I'd gotten to this point earlier. And I wish I had maybe accepted help. Like maybe I'd seen a doctor in Spain rather than just doing a telehealth appointment with my doctor who did recommend that I see a doctor in Spain, but I was too proud. Again, I'm learning and growing through all of these experiences as well. But I finally realized at the end that if my health was the most important thing, every choice I'd been making was against the thing I wanted to support the most. And what I learned from this trip and about my own resiliency is that sometimes making the right choice sucks. Like sometimes making the right choice for your life and your progression is not fun and it's not good. And I know we talk a lot about like self-care and like, you know, all the fun things that are associated with self-care, like face masks and spa days. But there's also an element of self-care that is like deeply depressing and sad. The best self-care I could have had is to just chill out and not do anything for a couple days at the beginning of this trip and let myself really heal. Yeah, I mean, like, I think a lot of people are prone to that, especially when you're going on a holiday. You don't want to sit in your hotel room and be sick. But then at the same time. If you're going to be sick for your whole holiday, it is probably better to take a, a step back. But I didn't listen to myself and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I knew that it wasn't aligned with my own goals in any way. It was just purely focused on having fun. But sometimes the right choices aren't fun. And when I finally let myself rest, I realized how much damage I'd done because I didn't stop, right? Because I just kept pushing my body and my body got weaker and weaker and eventually I got a chest infection. And I think at the end of the day, I walked away from the trip. I could have been really upset, right? I planned this four month trip. I worked so hard and everything. I booked all these amazing experiences. Half of them I didn't get to do. In fact, the one thing I really wanted to do up and got canceled on the one day I felt good. So that also, you know, was a wrench. But what I realized at the end of the day is what I learned from this trip is that it's okay to not be able to do something. And it's also sometimes terrible to have to admit that. I know I talked a little bit in the beginning of this video about how this was going to be about resiliency. And you're probably like, Anna, you like didn't do the right thing. Guess what? That's going to happen all the time. I'm going to do the wrong thing probably once a week, at least probably once a day, honestly, that's part of being human. But I think resiliency is about taking those experiences that we fail at or make mistakes at, or don't go the way we planned and getting up from them and then changing our behavior. So they don't happen again. I mean, I, I don't disagree with her, but well, I think a lot of these things were probably a lot more manageable if she wasn't 500 pounds. So, yeah, it's all well and good what she's saying. And yeah, I agree with what she's saying. But And I know she's losing some weight, probably because of medication. But what is she actually doing to actually better her health? To, so that she is actually more resilient. Because being a healthy body fat does mean you have a better immune system, usually speak. But cat, please does mean that you have a better immune system, usually speaking, that you recover quicker, that your wounds heal quicker, etc., etc. You know, like being a healthy person internally and physically, not just mentally, but I mean, just in terms of like your organs, etc. Uh, it's beneficial to your health. It just means, it does, usually, it does usually mean that you bounce back quicker, that you're not as sick. The fact that she's 500 pounds, I'm sure that everything that she experienced in terms of sickness was exacerbated. But she doesn't mention that though. She just talks about like how she needs to learn to rest a bit more. It's like, yeah, okay, but are you going to acknowledge that all this probably is due to your weight? That important piece of changing our behavior is, I believe, the fundamental core of resiliency. Because things will always happen, right? But if you're always learning and growing, you can at least be confident that you got something out of that terrible experience. So even though I was sick all the way through Europe, it's going to change the way I plan travel. It's gonna change the way I listen to my body. And it's gonna make it easier for me to tap out when something's not good. I, my own pride got the best of me on this trip, it did. 
but it's not gonna get the best of me on my next trip because as I said, this is a year of growth and from this experience, I'm choosing to grow. Yeah, it sucked, but what I'm learning from it, well, it doesn't suck at all. So with that, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Again, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. You can check them out by using the link down in my description or going to betterhelp.com slash glitter and lasers. Again, you'll get 10% off the first month. With that, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Go out there, be resilient, don't be dumb like me, or be dumb like me and learn from it. Whatever the case, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I'll check you later, and peace. All right, so. I just can't believe she has the audacity to <laughs> To expect to uh, expect a, a Michelin star restaurant to have chairs that fit her ass like no it doesn't work like that you know it's a restaurant they can set whatever standards they want it's not a McDonald's um, and they can still set whatever standards they want my cat has zoomies anyway guys I'm gonna go because I need more caffeine and then I need to look at the weather and see when I can walk my dogs without getting soaking wet so insert a a star and a chair emoji comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why and i'll see you in the next video bye guys